So after sitting on a while, I'm pretty confident in saying this, that Migration is the best Illumination movie yet. And I would also go as far as say it will probably end up being their most underrated movie, most specifically because the tracking for this is not doing too well for this holiday season. And maybe you've never even heard of Migration, but this is about a family of ducks who decide to leave the safety of a New England pond for an adventurous trip to Jamaica. However, their well-laid plans quickly go wary when they get lost and have to experience some really uncomfortable things and bizarre situations. Now, again, this is from Illumination. They've made things like Minions, Despicable Me, Sing, Secret Life of Pets, and most notably earlier this year, the Super Mario Brothers movie. And all their movies, for the most part, are enjoyable. Specifically for kids, who I think kids are absolutely loving their movies. Every time I've gone to a press screening of any of their films, while the adults might not be laughing and they might be falling asleep, the kids every single time are laughing their butts off and truly enjoying their movies. And I think they've found a honing into that. But what they have not found yet, I think, is that adult humor that so many notable films, such as Pixar, has been able to craft over the last two decades. And when I say Pixar specifically, is I feel like they most of their movies are movies that are made for adults, but children can also enjoy. And that's either with their themes, their thematics, some of the humor there. I think early DreamWorks films such as Shrek also did this same nature. And I find that if it's not a Pixar or a Disney movie, 95% of the time the movie is bogged down with fart and stupid jokes and really overall just not clever jokes and dance numbers and musical numbers. I'm just saying that it's an animated movie that has musical numbers that were dedicated to this. No, I'm talking about they take the most catchy ass songs that were made during that time frame and throw it into the movie and give you a bunch of dance sequences. And sometimes it works. Like Trolls, I think, has really much just made a name for that in itself. And those movies are enjoyable for what they are. But in the end of the day, they're very forgettable. Migration is not that. Migration for me actually has kind of sat with me for a bit and specifically a lot of its different moments. And don't get me wrong, there is one dance sequence. It wouldn't be an animated film without that, but it didn't really piss me off. It's very much at the end and I'll talk about that when I get to my issues with the film, but I'm just surprised with this movie overall and it is the best Illumination movie, not just from the animation standpoint, but from a story perspective. If you did see my Super Mario Brothers movie review earlier this year, I did mention that I think that was probably the best Illumination movie, but on rewatches, it is such a surface level story that when you are trying to get a little bit deeper, it's kind of nice to see what Migration was able to do. I think a lot of what Illumination probably could have done with Super Mario Brothers movie though, was probably hindered by Nintendo since they're so protective of their franchises. When you do look at Mario, it's a simple video game and it's very much a simple movie. We are talking about that. We're talking about Migration today. And if you are new here though, I do want to say, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well as leave your thoughts down below. The end of the year is almost coming. We still have quite a few reviews coming up such as Rebel Moon, Aqua, man and even of course the final dceu ranking of the entire my life i'll probably never revisit that franchise just in on this channel but alongside that also we have tons of top 10 lists top 10 movies of the year top 10 uh most underrated movies my favorite tv shows of the year my favorite video games of the year so many countless content so if you are a geek like me you are certainly in the right place Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below for more. Without further ado, let's dive into this. I want to start with my pros. That's my favorite thing to talk about when we talk about movies. And I like to talk about the voice actors because I was kind of surprised. I knew who was in this, but I didn't know who was playing who. And first off, Elizabeth Banks and Kumal Nanjiani are actually really stellar in their voice performances. I think as the two main characters, Mac and Pam. And their budding rivalry heads and their kind of issues with one another add for a lot of fun dynamics that I was actually really impressed with and their chemistry with just in the voice department really brings these ducks to life. There's two sequences that I really look into them in one point where they're arguing about going on this trip to another part where they're tangoing through an entire sequence to get away from someone. Both sequences really bring out the husband and wife mentality of these ducks, and I found it to be enjoyable. Alongside Tressie Gazelle and Casper Jennings, who plays their kids, never heard them in anything before, have no idea who they are, but they are great. And Gwen, the tiny little duckling in here, is just adorable. And so many different of her mentions really works, but also what really works there is the sibling rivalry. Sometimes you guys are best friends, sometimes you guys butt heads, sometimes you hate each other, but it always works. 
Going inside this, though, the rest of the cast, such as Key, Michael Key, is great as Delroy. Danny DeVito plays Uncle Dan, and I think he had some of the most standout moments. Aquafina, you can give or take for her. I'm a fan of Aquafina. I liked her as Chump. Isabella Mercedo, not really in here too much. I know some people might be like, who's Mr. Beast? I honestly cannot remember. He plays a lost duck. No idea who that was. And for me, the rest of this movie is just flat out enjoyable in all the different voice departments. And when we speak about the animation as well, that was another thing that was really stuck out to me was how beautiful the movie was. It wasn't like all the human characters definitely look like something that Illumination would make from any of their countless movies that they made. All the human characters always look the same. And they probably just take assets from one another and kind of just drop them in to help make the films. But when you look at the ducks, the environments they're in, and the different type of scenarios, it kind of has this like storybook tale to it. Um, but it looks so realistic. Like there's certain sequences when they're flying for the first time that I thought was gorgeous. And then another one when they're flying above the clouds that really just pops in an eye-catching way. And there's a lot of memorable moments at that, and specifically the way that the whole movie is from a duck's point of view. You never hear humans talking or trying to react to the ducks. The humans are very much more silent, and there's this antagonist that kind of gets on their tail towards the back half of the movie. And how that antagonist comes into this, from a duck's perspective, I thought it was actually really clever how they bring this entire scenario together. It takes place in a kitchen, and that's kind of all put into there, but seeing from a bird's eye level everything that you could possibly imagine I thought was great. And also how birds react to other birds. Ducks react to the herons. Ducks react to pigeons and what they kind of say to those mentalities. Again, very interesting because that's not something that you see. And that's where I kind of get to the themes of this movie. The, the movie has deep themes of like marriage and like how husband and wives act with one another and how you should be with your children and maybe not too overprotective but just enough but to let them go out and kind of discover their own things and I think that's something that a lot of parents can actually learn from nowadays and it kind of puts in a refrain that I might not be a father yet but what kind of father would I want to be in this world and I really like how migration kind of deals with those natures and the other thing that I really liked is how it deals with other birds and how they are in a way that kind of reflects kind of what something that I felt Elemental was trying to do this year with the different elements and all that. There's different birds and everything of that and how you maybe shouldn't judge a book by its cover and who you're working with. And maybe if you're screaming at this bird, this bird might be the person that can absolutely help you. Again, this film might be a little surface level in those themes, but I found that the themes in here were a lot deeper than anything Illumination has done and really takes you back to some of those earlier DreamWorks films such as Shrek. Not saying it's as great as Shrek, because we're, we're not getting there, but Migration really brings that lovely aspect about and I really loved how they were able to touch on that making this film very underrated I, I just do not understand why Illumination why Universal is burying the lead on this movie because I almost forgot that this movie was coming out until I get all these reminders that hey there's a screener coming up you don't miss and I definitely didn't want to miss it because I want to give every film a fair shot and I think Illumination definitely deserves that with this brand new film to just kind of put an eye context into this I really was not excited for this movie I thought the trailers looked so generic I, I could have cared less for this movie and I've just kind of if it's not Pixar making an animated film or it's not Hayao Miyazaki or an anime film from someone respected I really just especially if it's just a western animated movie I, I honestly half the time roll my eyes because I'm just like it's gonna be the same shit that I've seen before I'm really happy to say it's not and I'm really happy to say that as well that the film does have genuine humor to it. There is a lot of fun aspects to it. I never found that any of the humor was too stupid or too dumb or dumbed down for kids. It was kind of that perfect layer that I just consistently had a smile on my face while watching this film. And it felt like you can relate with the family that you're watching here with maybe your own family as well. If I were to get to my only issue with the movie, I mentioned I don't like when it jumps into a musical or dance number. And I find that a lot of animated movies specifically rely on that throughout the movie but most rely on it very much at the end to leave you kind of like, oh, I like that song. I like how they're ending it too. And this film, like no spoilers, but it does almost end with a musical number. And it didn't bother me because I, I think it was deserved and kind of worked its way up to in general where they ended up at the end of the movie. But I didn't think it was needed. And I think it could have ended a little bit sooner than it actually did. But the final gag of the film, I did think it was funny. And, I, and again, that's one thing I feel like 
Animated movies end on three things. They end on a musical number nowadays, they end on a fabulous gag, or they end like any other sort of movie would. This movie ends kind of musical number, kind of a funny gag. I wish it would have just gone straight to the gag because the, the joke at the very end was really great and a great moment to end the movie on. And that really is my only issue with the film. Will it be memorable? Will it be one of those classic movies or one of those very underrated movies for the years to come? Time will tell. That's honestly going to be more on the children and how kids grow up and they hit into their teen years. Do they discover this movie? Do they not? There's countless Disney movies that I find that I grew up with, but many other adults did not, um, such as Treasure Planet, Atlantis. It's like people speak about those movies, but they never really talk about them. And that's where time will tell. There's nothing to tell right here. All I can say is that from pure experience and pure subjective opinion, I think this is the best Illumination movie and I think you're gonna quite enjoy it this holiday season. Let's say I'm gonna give Migration a B plus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. And one more point to mention, there is a Despicable Me short at the very beginning of this for Vector. It was cute, it was funny. Um, Don't know why they included it. Uh, that's just me. If you're one of those Despicable Me fans, maybe that makes you a reason to go check out this movie. But with all that said, guys, until next time, stay classy.